Hello and welcome back to Game of the Workers. Hey, let's do some. I'm really curious how to get to this part. Let's go back to the to dusk slopes and this time take a different path. It's interesting though that each time we're going back to the ship, it takes us around. Five hours to get used to it. The pale floor descends rapidly away from the ridge in this direction, towards a field of shadowy outcrops. What is that? It looks like a whole menagerie of creatures caught in a silken net. A mass of tentacles and growths unlike anything I've seen. It's difficult to understand the anatomy of these creatures just by looking. Another group of towers rises toward the pale light, each strata piled with silver silk. In the shadow of the towers there is a deep silence. From between the towers, a pale blue light flickers over the rocks. The veils reach out toward the black basalt towers, emanating flashes of the cyan light. More veils. We need to be careful. There has to be a way to find a path through. A gap has opened up between the veils, allowing passage between their gauzy bodies. This veil is in the process of splitting away from the rest of its body. Is this how the veils are born, or is this an injury? Even on the far side of the time roof, the veil's light can be overwhelming, multiplying my shadow in all directions. This close to available light is unbroken in veils, its repaired pregnancy making goals and ritmos. Veils shimmer along the slope, darkly both glittering lights and the dark remain of those creatures who stay too close. So, flying by the towers, this path leads even deeper into the slope. So, the way to go through. With the blinding veil behind me, I notice small pinpricks of light moving across the slope. There are other creatures here. This outcrop hides a wealth of life, from long locked holes and filled with figures and blood shapes which build through the suit's lines. I'd like to call these land crests. Those values they carry on their backs are so cumbersome. A shelled crab like creature which scavengers the ocean floor in search of nutrients carries a milky slime bubble on its back. These pale pulsing creatures seem to seem so passive, I'm going to start taking notes on them. These ovoid creatures sit pulsing on the edge of the deep oasis. They are glassy and soft, like partially boiled, shallowless eggs. This huge curved fan glows with a warm bell luminescence. Waves of amber light passes up its considerable height. Occasionally, this creature stops and unfolds its tentacles in the chambers to cover a broad area of water. Is it haunting? These creatures are so fast that their color makes them hard to see, but let's keep track of them. 
These rapid swimming blobs feel like creatures of dark shows with very large shoes and tails. They move so fast. Unlike the Bloom's fans, these deep water variants are covered with a translucent sheet of meteors, which protects their delicate spines. On closer inspection, these petals are solid rows, not fragile objects. They sit like thin tree stumps in the sand, each on its own sidewalk. Side stop. I'm going to name these cold fire baits uh, bathers. They seem to be strongly linked to the light of those plants. These white petal shaped plants gather in groups and grow in the light of deep sea plants. Their pollen fills the water around each stem. From this side, this arrangement of pulsing and growing forms nestled into the puzzle is a sanctuary of light and light. Standing beside these clusters of egg-like forms, I can feel them filtering huge volumes of seawater in place of goats. When close to these creatures, you can feel the pull of their strong filtering action as they absorb water and push it through their bodies. Away from the outcrop, the silty smoke begins to descend again. A large fields of veils those pale blue light appears unpleasantly cold in comparison to the well, the oasis. No wonder my eyes are reason my drunk, these veils are everywhere. Like on Earth, they must rely on predation to survive this deep, where the sunlight reaches. A large tangle of veils stretches out ahead, producing a silent light that softly flickers in the dark. The tangled veils create a translucent twitching maze. Who knows how temporary these gaps in the walls of veils are? We should make use of them while we can. There's beauty to being inside a field of veils, a song of light that makes it impossible to keep a sense of direction. These looped veils are carrying a wave of light that passes from one individual to another. And back again. What does this mean? The veils here create a set of cozy walls, closing off the ocean around. An avenue between the veils flickering shapes caught in the sweet swamp, such as one. Other creatures make use of this safe passage too. Like city lights beyond a curtain, I can see the warm print pricks of an oasis behind this woxy veil. Some creature has shed or lost a segment of its tail show here. Among the veils, it looks small enough to something. Tail segment. The veils are coming together ahead. I hope this gap will remain open long enough for us to pass through. This veil is hung with the husks of its cat catches, like dark clouds of cool the starlit sky of its bioluminescence. Past the diff drifting sheets of another pattern of light skirts around the edges of the tangle. A mutual predator for the veils, perhaps. A gap in the tightly knotted veils leads to the welcoming amber light of another oasis. These creatures seem to produce small branching buds in the same way that the hydra grows a clone of itself in order to reproduce. 
At this creature's interior sits a sphere surrounded by a reflective membrane, bathed in the light from the transparent sections in its body. I'll call these cold fire fans after those mesmerizing flame like pulses. Feel their feeding fans that, beneath a mucus sheath, pulse with warm light, often surrounded by other creatures benefiting from their glow. It is hard to tell if this is a colonial creature or a single individual. Whichever it is, we should keep our distance to avoid those tentacles. This fan shimmers with waves of cold fire, bathing the surrounding oasis in warm light. Get used right away. Another garden of creatures rooted into a dark puzzled shell. A welcome break from the intensity of the veil of sea. The veil seem to sit away from these puzzle shells, beginning to see themselves in the sealed deep dark between the rocks. This side of the outcrop where the warm light of the fan does not reach is absent of light. At the edge of the outcrop in the light sand slope, a shallow burrow leads down, eggs gleamed within. It's sampled them here. At the northernmost tip of this outcrop, a dark pillar rises up with stack layers edged with pale silk. A better look at these creatures shows that they are swimming with their rear legs while using their tails to propel themselves somehow. I'm calling these cryptic creatures water bulbs. Let's see what we can uncover, uncover about them back in the lab. Partially transparent egg-shaped creatures which feed by filtering water. A strange sphere sits inside the iridescent interior. These pale pulsing creatures have noticeable growth budding off from their central form. You could sample them here. Tiny creatures crawl along the layers of dark rock, leaving behind small, strange marks on the shallow silk tiles. These creatures seem to follow the same roads back and forth through the veils. Why do they limit themselves to these pathways? As the bustle shelf sinks back into the sill of the ocean, Floor falls into the into a huge field of glittering veils. A group of loops veils out with the same pattern in an alternate game of four and experience. Are they communicating with each other? Away from the outcrops, the veils claim what territory they can. This field is the largest I've seen, wandering way into the deep. A split in the veils leads into, a, into their ornate interior, navigating this huge tangle with the struggle. The veils are reaching in towards this point on the ocean floor, like giant signal sound. From this middle point of the tangle, it is impossible to see the inner pools of the ocean below.
With all these orbiting polyps and strings, I'm naming this creature the Deep Ori. An ornate creature that casts a net like arrangement of tentacles and polyps to shock passive prey into submission. Among the hypnotic patterns of the veils, other lights move, pinpricks like LEDs, shifting in the loose orbit of an unseen rabbit. The tangle turns back on itself, revealing new paths into its interior. A gap in the middle of the tangle where the lights are dimmer, the sickening and shifting sensation lessens. Here the vest closes into all these shoulders, sh sheets passing up against one of those gentle waves. The veils The veils meet here, but through dark muscles and skin we can see the dark shape of an outcrop. Unlike the other outcrops, this dark crop is being animated by the veils subsumed by the veils. Something clouded in purple glint in the sill of the young uh, veil looks small enough to sink the hole. Though the veils are encroaching on its position, the outcrop silently holds out against a cold chemical light. Under refuge in these dark waters, growing with life. Surrounded by its audience of light bathing petals, the fawn sh sh shifts shimmers from the night bonfire. Uh. Among the elegant shapes of the petals, small still like creatures trying to think about it as well. At the edge of the light from the farm, the petals are pale and twisted away, perhaps turning to another source of food. Faint flickers of light through a tall pillar of buzzing shards, rising up into the thing of the floor above. Twisted back on itself, this veil is being eaten away by creatures, its defensive abilities mutual to put the samples of tissue here. The tangles of veils close around the outfit here, increasing. In case you get in the prison for me. Where the veils intersect strips of bioluminescence flower, creating bright holes in the gossamer material. After the last veil, the dark returns. Outside the reach of the veils, the dark cool water is a welcome change from the incoherent patterns of light. We seem to be through, no more veils ahead. Unlike the other outcrops, this one is free of life. Is proximity to the veils vital to the wounds of existence? The shelf appears out of the dark, but no on the surface can I see the one glow from farm. Another of Mine's ROVs scattered across the outcrop, we should be still able to use its transmission for base. 
Here, in the middle of the outcrop, our ARV. This one was going as supply cage too. We can recharge and refill our oxygen. His access is map data. Open up the terminal when you are ready. It seems like this ROV was disabled by the veils like the other one. This can be right. The mapping scans report a large physical anomaly just north of here. From the data it looks like a structure? That's impossible. Maybe the those fry the sensors. Either way, we should, we should go check it out. Past the shelves, there's only the dark of the descending slope. There is nothing here but the silt thickening in the suit's hoglands. Some strangely geometric rocks sit in the dark. Vanity. I'm calling this abyss of sh sail shells. Those white little plates are instantly recognizable. Small, dark creature with a large, translucent tail shell that allows it to rapidly move through the water, navigating the veil tangles safely. Some strange geometric rocks sit in the dark. What are these formations? And this is where we're gonna end this part. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!